Every Friday, we're going to bring you the close with Ross Greenwood. Ross is now the business editor here at Sky News. Great to have you on board, mate. I'm looking forward to yeah. hearing uh, what you've got to say. This week's been a great week to start. Lots happening. There certainly has been. And look, amongst other things, we'll talk markets in a little while, but obviously they've been incredibly volatile. We'll get to the reasons yeah. why. But today, the big break news is an inquiry that the government held into the expenses. Now, already remember an expenses scandal has seen the chief executive of Australia Post, Christine Holgate, yeah. lose her Can't job over the watches, watches right? Yeah. Uh, if this particular case involved Australia's corporate cop. Now, James Shipton is the chairman of the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, ASIC, and already James Shipton um, was the man who was charged effectively with putting the steel in, in our corporate cop, taking on uh, the big end of town, in particular after the Royal Commission into banks and the financial system. Now, what had occurred is that James Shipton, when he came to Australia, had effectively uh, been given between some uh, $300,000 and $500,000 for moving expenses. He used $118,000 of that for tax advice as he was coming back to Australia. That was then investigated by... By the Auditor General. There was an independent inquiry into that while he stood down. So we haven't had a corporate cop right. for quite some time. And as a result, now we suddenly find completely exonerated. Right. So he's going to stick around or... No, go he's going to lose his job. So here's the interesting thing. Dan Crennan, who also was investigated, he was the head of enforcement. He was the head kicker. He's gone because of $750 a week in rental allowance. He's been exonerated, but he's gone. And then what you've got is you've got a situation where now um, James Shipton will go, and the question is, they've got to start all over. So what happens, in my mind, to all of this investigation? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is so important. It's never been more important to have a corporate watchdog and we're starting from scratch again. Start from scratch. Hey, tell me about what's going on in the US. This is an amazing story, this GameStop Reddit thing. Uh, it's about short selling. But normally it's the big uh, borrowers, the big investors who short sell and manipulate the market. Yeah. A bunch of little people tried to beat them at their own game. Well, tried to beat them at their own game. Now, this GameStop, you actually know who GameStop is. It's have a you... shop, isn't it? It's a, a retailer. Shop. Have, you, have, you, have you got kids at all? I do. I keep so... them away from computer games. All right. Mate. So, <laughs> yeah, but, but they would certainly know EB Games. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. So, GameStop owns uh -huh. EB Games here in Australia. Right. There and go. there's about 5,000 employees here in Australia. Mm. So, basically, they'll go on broke. That's what the market's view was. Um, and as a result, short sellers have been piling in for 12 months. And what happened, as you say, these little, um, almost like bulletin boards, um, forums, if you like, online forums, got together and said, well, actually, we kind of like this, this game, uh, this game store, and we don't want it to die in this way yeah. under the weight of the short sellers. And so they started to just, just to buy it. And they realised so many people were so short and had to buy back the stock if it went up even a little bit that basically they didn't sell to them. And so the stock price went up and up and up and kept on going up. And, and so really this was one of the most amazing almost double crosses or stings that you have ever witnessed. And that's the reason why there was such enormous volatility on Wall Street this week. So who loses out of this? The big investors or the little people? Or is it still to play out? Well there were hedge funds who were literally suggested to be going bankrupt. As it turned out they've had to basically bail out. In other words they had to buy back the stock. Yep. So they had to buy it back from the little guys or from someone at least anyway. And when they finally bought themselves out. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions of dollars have been wiped out from some of these hedge funds and some of those little guys, a bit like Bitcoin, have made 10, 15 times their money. Extraordinary stuff. And overall the market's down this week. It's been a tough week. Down. And as a result of not just that volatility, because some of the tech stocks here got hammered, because it was feared that or tech sectors around uh, the world would be affected. But if we go and have a look at the markets, what we can see is that the S&P uh, ASX 200 is down by about 2.8% and you can see during the course of the week you've had a pretty decent fall and even uh, today as well it continued to fall and it was late in the day. Again, iron ore miners got whacked. Uh, this is because China's continuing to consider curbing steel production into the yep. future which could uh, have an impact on, on iron ore. If we go to some of the stocks that actually moved around the place today, um, what you can see again in the market movers today uh, mining stocks were higher, blue scope steel, aristocrat leisure of course uh, makes gaming machines and on the other side of it, if we go back and have a little look at those that were falling, you can see here, it was actually uh, Fortescue, which has been one of the big winners out of the market because of the big rise in iron ore. Linus, of course, which is rare earths, which they're now trying to set up a plant with the defence forces in the United States. Kogan, of course, has been, been one of the favourites. Its sales disappointed, despite the fact that I can tell you that they were up by 96% 
over the past year. 96% their sales were up, but the share price fell because that was disappointing. <laughs> Good Lord. These are bizarre times. It's going to be great to have you on board, Ross. No problems at all. Thanks. See you next week.